What is up guys? We are back with another BIOS video and today we're checking out the BIOS here on the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Extreme motherboard. Now, this BIOS should be pretty much the same across all of the ROG X570 motherboards. There are some things that are a little bit newer in this and that are gonna be a little bit different considering that this is an extreme motherboard, but the overall layout of the motherboard should be pretty much the same. Now, actually, when you get into the BIOS, um, you're gonna be dropped into the advanced mode, probably because, again, this is an extreme motherboard. If you're wondering, how do I get into the BIOS? How do I get to the screen? All you do is just keep on hitting that delete button, not the backspace button, the delete button, on your keyboard when you power on your system. So hit the power button and then just keep on hitting that delete button and then you'll be dropped right here into the BIOS. So as I said, you do get dropped into advanced mode. If you wanna go into easy mode, there is a little button down here or I believe the hotkey is F7. Yeah, so F7 we can toggle back and forth between easy mode and advanced mode. Now easy mode, um, like all easy modes, gives you everything that you're gonna kinda wanna see and you know you might wanna change on your initial first install or first boot up. Um, so we have all of our information up here on our processor, um, speeds and everything like that, CPU temperature in real time, uh, CPU core voltage in real time and motherboard temperature in real time. We can see the memory that we do have installed right here and we can enable our XMP profile or as ASUS calls it, DOCP. Um, you can just see, you can either disable it or just enable your XMP profile that easy to do. Over here, we have our storage information so we can see what drives we have installed. Um, this is just our SATA drive here and you can actually see what connector it's even connected to as well right there. Fan profiles down here. This will show you all of the devices you have connected to your fan header. So we only have one, which is our CPU fan and you can see um, the speed in real time. Over here, we can see our fan curve um, and you can actually click into QFan control. You can optimize all your fans, you can set your fan curves, you can set like silent, turbo, full speed, all that kind of stuff you can do right here very easily. Um, and then over here we can, do, we can do easy system tuning so you can you know, set a certain tune like ASUS Optimal or you can just set it to default or normal. Um, and there is no eco mode, which is a little weird, but this is an extreme board. So ASUS Optimal or normal right here. And then boot priority, again, only one drive installed, but if we had multiple drives, we could just drag or drop them to set our boot priority. And we have a little shortcut here for the boot menu. Up top here, we have some things as well. So we can change our language. The easy tuning wi wizard, um, you know, this will help uh, tune your system and do all that. We can click into that if we want. There's a search here, so you can search within the BIOS. If you're looking for a specific setting, you can use the search. Um, here we can enable or disable Aura. Um, that is the RGB lighting on the board. You can easily do that here. And this kind of gives you an idea of you know, the different modes, stealth mode, aura only, all that kind of stuff, what they do. And then resize bar. <clears throat> this will of course enable bar support um, for full GPU memory uh, sharing and all of that. You can do that. So that's kind of one of the newer things in this mother or in this BIOS is the resize bar. So that is everything really here in the easy mode. Um, again, the only things that you really want to do uh, the first time you you know, turn on your system, set that XMP profile, set your boot priority, it is all in there. And you can see all your drives. So, if, you know, drive's not booting up or it's not being recognized, which we will talk about with this board. Um, you know, you can see if it's being detected by the board. So you have all that right there. But let's go into advanced mode again. We can hit F7 and go into our advanced mode. When you're dropped into advanced mode, you should be in the main screen. Again, gives you all of the information on your BIOS, your CPU, and all of that. Uh, some things you do wanna obviously look for is your BIOS version, um, as well as your uh, AGESA version. Again, uh, there has been a lot of updates to those, so you wanna definitely check those. Also down here, we have security, um, and it's nice that ASUS gives you a description of like, what's the difference between an administrator password and a user password. Um, here you can go ahead and set those things as well. Um, and that is main. We also have a my favorites menu. So anything in the BIOS, any setting in the BIOS can be added to this menu. So if there's something that you're changing a lot of the time, 
you can add it to your My Favorites menu. We have some things in here, um, you know, but again, anything can be put into, so you don't have to drop through two or three menus to get to a certain setting. It can all be put right here into the My Favorites. Now, I'm sure where a lot of you guys wanna go is the Extreme Tweaker. So Extreme Tweaker, um, this basically is where you're gonna do all of your system tuning, um, setting your XMP profiles. This is where you're going to do your overclocking, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so first there are overclocking presets built into this board. Again, it is an extreme board. So you have a generic, oops, you have, let's go back. You have your generic OC preset and your water cold OC preset. Those are again built into the board. Uh, AI overclocking tuner. So if you're just enabling your XMP profile, um, if you didn't do it in the easy mode and you're in the advanced mode, it's already set. Um, so by default, everything will be on auto. And what you kind of want to do is just enable it to DOCP standard, and that's going to uh, enable your XMP profile on your memory, and you're good to go. It sets everything. It sets uh, the frequency, memory frequency, and all of that. Let's go put this back on auto really quickly. Um, we can set our memory frequency, FLC, FCLK frequency, core performance boost, CPU core ratio, um, and then you can set CPU core ratio per CCX, TPU, um, you can set those, performance bias, bias. Um, again, um, you know, you can set this to the certain apps that you could be running. Uh, precision boost overdrive, different settings for that. DRAM timing control, so this is your timings for your memory. So if you wanna loosen your tighten, or your loosen or tighten your timings, you can go ahead and do that right in here. Um, external DG, DG plus power control. This is all your power settings as far as like loan line calibration and all that kind of stuff, phase control. Um, you have all of that here. Tweaker's Paradise. You're not gonna wanna change any of this if you're just doing some basic overclocking, but there's a lot of stuff you can change in here. Um, you know, again, this is an extreme board, so a lot of people might wanna change these different settings, um, but everything again is set by auto or by by default to auto. Uh, and then here we have our voltages. Again, if you're doing any overclocking, CPU core voltages, of course, what you're gonna wanna change, uh, you would set this to manual mode and then manually set what you want the voltage to be. Um, and then you have all of your other voltages down here as well. So that is Extreme Tweaker. Um, again, I don't, in these videos, I don't go crazy in depth on it, um, but this is where you're gonna do all of your, you know, tu system tuning, overclocking, and things like that. Um, we could, if we wanted to, set this to manual, um, and then you could set your memory frequency, um, and then your core ratio to whatever you wanted uh, if you were doing any overclocking. We'll go pick that back to auto. And then un under advanced, um, first we have trusted computing. Uh, this is not where you're gonna enable your FTPM. By default, at least on the BIOS that we have, um, FTPM is enabled by default. So if you did want to um, install Windows 11, you won't have a problem out of the box, at least for us out of the box on this board, um, you won't have that problem. So the second, one in here under advanced is AMD F FTPM. This is enabled by default. If by some reason it's disabled um, and you want to install Windows 11, you just, you know, it would be disabled and then you enable it. That's it. You know, very simple and easy to do. CPU configuration, again, shows us all of our information on our CPU and then the different features of the uh, processor, we can enable or disable them and set the different things for that. SATA configuration, again, this is all of, you know, everything to do with SATA, uh, SATA mode, enable the ports. You can see all of our ports here and what's installed. Also with the M.2, um, the top M.2 does support SATA, so it is listed here. And the DIMM2 uh, module does support SATA uh, M.2 drive, so those are listed here as well. Onboard devices configuration, so RGB lighting. So by default, as soon as you plug power into this board, your system does not need to be on. As soon as you plug power into this board, the RGB lights on the board will turn on. Um, if you don't want that, like if you shut down your computer and you don't want the RGB lights to continue to be on, um, you can change this to when system is in sleep, hibernate, and off states. 
again, by default, it's all on. You can do, you know, aura only, aura off, or stealth mode. Um, and again, you can turn all of the RGB lights on the board completely off if you want using this setting. There is that two inch OLED screen on this. Same thing, you can, um, by default, it is always on. Even when you just have power to them, it's always on. So if you don't want it, you know, when you shut down your computer, you don't want that OLED screen on, you can easily just, you know, turn this to off right here. We can enable or disable the 10 gig LAN card, the 2.5 gig LAN Intel LAN controller, the AS Media USB 3.2 controller. You can turn all this stuff on or off. One thing that's very important is the CPU PCI Express configuration mode. So by default, the second and third M.2 slot on this motherboard is disabled. They will not work. If you install a drive, they will not work. You have to change this CPU PCI configuration mode. So by default, it's enabling all of the lanes. So, um, so 16 lanes for the first GPU slot and 16 lanes for the second GPU slot. Um, what you wanna do is depending on your M.2 configuration, you're going to enable or you know share the lanes. So this one would be PCI Express, uh, first slot gets 16 PCI Express, second slot will only get, I believe it's either, I believe it's only four, and then the second M.2, or the third M.2 slot will be enabled. And then secondly, which I think a lot of people want this configuration because they want a lot of M.2 drives, is your first PCI Express slot will get all 16 lanes and then M.2, the second M.2 and the second M.3 uh, will be enabled and the second GPU slot or the PCI Express uh, X16 underscore two, that's gonna be completely disabled. I think for most people, we're, most of us are running a single GPU and you want all the M.2 slots you can get. Um, so this would be the configuration. But again, by default, those two are disabled. So if you wanna enable both of those, you change this to that. Uh, we can enable or disable Bluetooth controller, USB audio, um, you know, configuration for the AS media storage controller, uh, USB power, all that kind of stuff. And all the link modes, they're all auto by default. You really shouldn't have, you know, to be changing those. APM configuration, PCI subsystem settings. Again, resize bar support. Um, you can just change this to auto if you want. USB configuration, again, um, you can, you know, enable or disable legacy USB support, all that kind of stuff. And then all the port controls, you can, you know, enable or disable a certain port. Network stack configuration, uh, disabled. HDD, SSD, smart information. So you can, again, you can see the smart information on the drives that you do have installed. Again, we only have one drive installed. Uh, so that's all we're, all we're seeing here. NVMe configuration. We don't have an NVMe drive installed currently, but if we did, uh, all of the options for it would be in here. AMW, oops, let's go over. AMW PBS, um, again, Thunderbolt supports, all the stuff for Thunder, Thunderbolt stuff is in here. AMD overclocking, again, you have to accept, and you go in here, and then you can do you know manual CPU overclocking, all that kind of stuff. Anything with AMD overclocking is in here. Um, and you can go ahead and change all of these different settings and AMD CBS. And these are all the options for AMD CBS, which are in here. And that is it for the advanced tab under monitor. So temperature monitor, this will show us all of our temperatures and give us the ability to disable monitoring on the certain sensors. So when you click in or, you know, hit enter here, it's going to say monitor. And then as we move down, it's gonna give us all of these temperatures. Now, if we didn't wanna monitor one of these, we can actually click here and hit ignore and it won't monitor anymore. Um, but again, live view of all of your temperatures, live view of all of your fan speeds. Um, you know, you can see that right there. Live view of your voltages and currents. And again, if you don't wanna monitor these, you just disable them. And then your Q fan configuration. This is basically the text version of the, you know, the Q fan that we were in before. It shows you everything, um, allows you to do your tuning. You can uh, enable or disable Hydro Node. Um, if you don't know what that is, Hydro Node basically allows you to plug in three fans using a splitter 
on each of the fan headers and then you can actually control each of those fans individually. Um, Q fan control and then your uh, all of the fan headers on the board, all the configuration for that is right in here. And then the water pump headers, um, all the configuration for that is right here as well. That's under monitor, under boots, uh, boot configuration. Again, everything to do with booting up. Uh, CSM compatibility, compatibility support module, secure boot, your boot options again. Um, and then boot override, which again, I love to see. Um, it just makes it easy to boot from a flash drive the first time, install Windows, and then not have to worry about running over and unplugging that uh, flash drive. Under tools, we have Easy Flash 3, which allows you to flash your BIOS. We have ASUS Secure Erase. This allows you to securely erase an SSD. Flex Key, um, that is the, basically it's the reset button on the motherboard, but you can reprogram it. So we can reprogram it to turn Aura Sync on or off, direct key or safe boot. Um, set up administrator, user profiles, you can save or load user profiles. We have SPD information on our memory, so you can check that. Um, My Asus, so My Asus is an app that um, you can download and do all that. Now, by default, it does not get installed when you first, you know, install Windows. Um, so it's disabled by default, but if you wanted to, it to download and do its thing, uh, you can enable it. And then Armory Crate, which basically is like Asus's companion software for their motherboards. I highly recommend uh, using it. It makes it really easy to download all of your drivers and software. This will install by default. So you install Windows, This you're gonna get a pop-up. As long as you have internet connectivity, this will download and install. Um, Again, it's enabled by default, so that will happen. If you don't want that to happen, you just disable this and you won't have to deal with Armory Crate if you don't wanna do that. Finally, we have exit. We can load our optimized defaults. We can save changes and reset. We can discard and um, launch EFI. There's so much in this BIOS. I know I didn't go over, oh, you know, not much of it. Just going through the menus, just showing you, you know, some basic overclocking stuff and things like that. And, you know, to change the, um, the, 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 the PCI Express stuff, uh, where was that right here? The CPU PCI configuration mode, that's gonna really come in handy, especially if you're using that second and third M.2 drive, uh, or M.2 slots. But everything in this BIOS, um, there's so much in here. It is very easy to find. Everything works really well. The BIOS is snappy. The easy mode is great. Uh, we can go back to that. Easy mode, again, very easy to enable your XMP profile, you know, very easy to set your boot priority and things like that and to see all your drives that you do have installed. So if you do have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. We will have links below to our full written review on this motherboard, so you wanna see how it performs, you know, see all the good stuff about this board. We will have that link below as well as a link where you can go ahead and pick this board up. Now guys, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video.